wade in the water, wade in the water, children, wade in the water. God's gonna trouble the water. The message is our eternal yes. Which of these two statements in today's scripture do you believe deserves our greater attention? Jesus' yes or no statement, do you want to be made well? Or the disabled man's how response, how can it be done? Which do you think deserves our greater attention? Jesus' says yes or the disabled man's how? Like any child in any children's message knows, you know the answer is always Jesus, right? Certainly it's Jesus' question here that deserves our greater attention, and yet a disabled body like this man's loses hope over time that a yes to Jesus' question, do you want to be made well, do you want to be made whole, might actually mean anything. Disabled bodies can lose hope of the yes. My father, for instance, suffered from emphysema. He died from it 30 years ago this past week, as a matter of fact. Each year that he lived with that chronic obstruction, pulmonary disorder, my dad's orbit became more constricted. Less oxygen in, less, less oxygen out, less oxygen all around him. Struggling with the question, how? His disabled body often found it difficult to respond to a yes. Disabled body, struggling with the how, can lose hope of the yes. From my inti intimate connections with prison inmates over the years, I have learned from them that the tidiness and cleanliness of the few square feet around their bunk or cell is of vital importance to them. For like the disabled man immobile by the pool of Bethesda today, their world more and more is defined by their confinement, restricted movement, containment, how, they ask, how best can I do the time? Doing the time is the question he always asks. How can I do the time? Forget saying yes. Every day, it's how. Individual bodies whose movements are circumscribed. The disabled man in today's story, my father, the, the imprisoned, contained, circumscribed. How about the body of Christ? Say the body of mainline Protestantism grown smaller and tighter and more circumscribed than ever. We are one, of course, of those bodies. Christ asks us, do you want, and our natural response is, how can we? The reality is that for its faithful function, smaller churches like ours require more effort from every individual member and friend. And that is challenging. Challenging with so many of us so busy already with our lives and by busy, I mean, especially those of us who may be disabled in some way, whose lives may be the busiest of all, given the careful daily negotiation of the world around. With so many of our energies devoted to the day-to-day -day getting by of the how, who can entertain Jesus' question, 
do you want to be made well? Ah, but there's good news that awaits us in Jesus' story today. The good news of this pool of Bethesda story that named our church, that then in turn named the burgeoning, bustling, overtaxed to the point of disability community around us. The good news of the story. You ready for the good news? You ready for that? The good news is this. We don't have to reply yes to Jesus' question, do you want to get well? We don't have to agree to it or even entertain it it in our circumscribed world. The good news is this. We don't have to say yes, not initially, because Jesus says it for us first. He says yes for us. In the story today, after hearing the disabled man's kvetching for what he cannot do, so understandable, he's so busy maintaining, Jesus proceeds to just tell him Stand up, take up your mat, and walk. Or a better translation for, from the Greek might be, keep rising up, take up your mat once and for all, and keep walking. Keep rising and keep walking in body and spirit, or in both, as I like to say. Get up off that security mat, and all will be well. So we don't have to say yes, not at first, because Jesus says it for us. We just have to listen, borrow from his confidence, and follow a few basic instructions. In the words of the late great mystic Karl Rahner, Jesus is our eternal yes. Regardless of our confinements, regardless of our circumscriptions, regardless of any disabilities or debilities, including the debilities brought on by our duties that we often so take upon ourselves lest we look bad or less things seem out of control. Ah, what we all do to maintain our world as it has been. Regardless of what may hold us back, though, Jesus says yes. As in, yes, you can do this. Si se puede. You've heard that, right? Yes, you can. You can do this, you, church, you, the less able body of Christ than before, in numbers and in busyness. Put away your security blanket, keep rising up, and keep on trucking. But wait, there's more. There's more good news here. In answering Christ, yes, you can do this call, we lay aside some of our busy how-to ways to help others rise up as well. To help others rise up and hear Christ's eternal yes, which in turn helps us hear Christ's yes for ourselves. We all know, for instance, that Ron Grimm does several things well. I have noticed, though, he does one thing particularly well. Ron takes great notes. And that's because Ron takes great note. As you heard him say earlier, he takes note of those who've had visited our sanctuary on the weekend, Saturdays and Sundays, 9 to 5. And even when he's not here, and he's not here most of the time, Ron makes sure that our sanctuary vigil keepers take notes as well, all to provide a running log of observations of spiritual desires and needs of passersby, all anonymous, who happen inside our open doors from all walks of life. And I would heartily commend that law to any of us. 
helping others to hear Christ's eternal yes for themselves. It is full of these quiet, unobtrusive considerations of individuals entering for countless reasons. Those who perhaps cannot sense a yes in their lives, but they do sense perhaps that maybe here Maybe the sanctified quiet here, maybe. I would heartily commend that log to you to see the yes being offered and the yes being received. And I would commend stopping a moment after worship on Sunday to just say hello to anyone you may cross coming in and out of this parking lot for a couple of big AA meetings at this time. To those who, they, those who are just coming to know how they can live in sobriety or to detach in love from those struggling from the disease. There are many Al-Anon meetings as well. For these meetings offer a how when there is no how. And in the process of discovering a how, our Del Rey friends discover a yes. A yes to a larger life that they may not even know exists. They discover their eternal yes waiting for them all along. The eternal yes waiting for them as it does for each of us. And sometimes that yes may not wait. It is simply thrust upon us all. Thrust upon us. I love to tell the story from my venerable friend, Tech Sample. He tells a story of his professor of his named Dr. Alan Knight Chalmers. He was a preaching professor at Boston University School of Theology. Now, a white man, Chalmers was deeply involved in the civil rights movement going back to the 1930s when he helped to free the Scottsboro Boys. Some of you may have heard of that case back in the 30s. He was even president, a white man, of the NAACP Legal Defense Fund at the time. Now, during the 1960s, Chalmers had a male black student with whom he was especially close and they loved each other very, very much. The student was from Alabama, and he wanted to go home for the holidays. His wife was pregnant and well along in her pregnancy. With the doctor's cautious clearance, they drove down. Returning from their time with their family and somewhere in North Alabama, the student's wife started to have sharp contractions. At least that's what she thought. They rushed to find a hospital. The first hospital they came to told them they did not serve colored people. Of course, times have changed, but in some ways they have not. When they finally found the hospital that would serve them, the baby had died, and the mother nearly died too. So when that black student got back to Boston, he was a cauldron of fury. And he would have nothing to do with Chalmers, though they had been very warm friends. One day, Chalmers in his office saw the student walking down the hall, getting close to the door. The student had not seen him. Chalmers waited, and when the student walked by, he thrust himself upon the student. He, he grabbed the student by the lapels, and Chalmers was a big man. He grabbed the young man by the lapels and hurled him into his office. You've got to talk about this, he exclaimed. You're not leaving this office unless you go right over me. He said that the young man responded with something that sounded like a growl. And then it became a shout. I damn you. 
A damn you, if it wasn't for you, I could hate every white man on the face of the earth. I often wonder where the people who feel marginal in this world, the outcast, stranded around Bethesda's healing pool, I wonder where they can find those they can trust, those who will not let, let them leave their presence until they hear the eternal yes those they can trust. Is it you? Is it me? Could it be our church?